Hello and welcome back to another Higher Mathematics video. And today we're going to be starting a brand new topic here and we're going to be talking about functions and graphs. Today we're going to be looking over the first part of this topic where we'll begin by looking at sets. So we begin by looking at sets. Now sets have a lot to do with functions and graphs. And before we get into looking at functions and graphs and graphs of functions, we need to know what a set is. And we also need to look at a few basic notation, which we'll go over in today's video. Now, what is a set? Well, we say in mathematics that a set is a collection of objects and these objects when we're talking about in maths are usually numbers called elements. So we call the numbers in a set elements. Now sets can be anything. A set can be letters, it can be shapes, but we're in maths we usually refer to a set, a set of numbers. And we'll go over a few examples of what a set looks like. So for a set, and we're just going to call this example set, the letter S for set. Now when we're talking about the numbers in a set, we use these curly brackets, which look like this. You might see them on your keyboard and on your phones. They look like this. We need to make sure if we open a set that we close it. And everything inside this set are the objects of the set or the elements of a set. So let's say this set has the numbers 5, 6, 7, and 8. We would say that this set, which we call S, has the elements 5, 6, 7, and 8. And this is because they are within inside the curly brackets. Now when we say we have an element of a set, so for example 5 is an element of S, and we give it this symbol here, we say five, and the symbol for is an element of looks like this, is an element of S. Now this symbol here just means, um, we say is an element of or in, and it basically just means that five is an element of S. Now we could also, you know how we, whenever we do an equals, we can also do is not equal. We can do the exact same with that for this symbol here. We would say, for example, nine is not an element of S. So we just do the L is an element symbol, but put a line through it. And this means is not an element of. Now this symbol here, it kind of just looks like a letter E, except it's a bit more curly. It's like a C with a line through it. Almost looks like a Euro symbol, but it just means that this thing here is an element of this set here. Now the last little bit of notation that we're gonna look at when we're talking about uh, elements of sets and things like that is let's say we have another set here. Let's call this set A. And we'll say that A is the set of elements, let's say six, seven, and eight. Now, as you can see, six, seven, and eight is in the set A and also in the set S. So because A, because of all the elements of A are also in S, we can say that A is what's called a subset of S, and this is just a subset, a subset. So it's just a smaller set that has some of the elements of S within it. So A is the set six, seven, eight, and S is the set five, six, seven, eight. And we give it this little symbol here, which we say that A is a subset of S. And this is just a letter. It's kind of like a letter C, but it's it's like a little more. It's kind of like that symbol there, but without the line. So we see that A is a subset of 
of s. Now, what if we have a set that has no elements? So this set here has no elements. Well, we call this set the empty set because there are no elements in it. So the set is empty. And we give the set of, uh, of no elements, the empty set, the symbol that. It's kind of like a circle with a line through it. And we call this symbol the empty set. Now, we've actually already looked at a few sets within high school mathematics. There's a few in particular that we should know by now, and we're going to go over what we call the standard sets. So although we might have sets such as the elements A, B, C, let's say that's a set. We might also have a set here, one, two, four, seven, which is a set, but we might create some standard sets, which are basically sets that have a set number of values, but we can abbreviate them with a little symbol. So the first standard set we're going to look at is given this symbol here. It's kind of like the letter N, except this part going down is slightly thicker. And we call this set the set of natural numbers. Now, what are national, na natural numbers, sorry? Well, these are what we call our counting numbers. So we say the set of natural numbers, uh, bold N, is equal to the set one, two, three, four, and so on. Now, it does not include negative numbers because we can't count in negative numbers. We call these our counting numbers, and it also does not include the number zero. So the next standard set we're going to look at is given this big capital letter Z, and it's got a little thick bit. Note, it's not the letter Z. We want to make it slightly thicker to look like this. So if you're drawing it, you might do that. And we call the set capital Z are integers set. Uh, so the set of all integers. And what does this look like? Well, this time we do include negative numbers and we do include zero. So we're going to have all the negative integers. So this just means minus one, minus two, all the way down to all the negative numbers. Now it's all is integers, so it's not negative a half. We want to make sure it's negative one, negative two. So it's whole numbers and we include zero this time. And we also include the entire set of natural numbers. So all the numbers greater than zero as well. So this is what our set of integers look like. Now, as we talked about subsets, we could say that the natural numbers is a subset of the set of integers, can't we? Now, the third type of standard set we're going to look at is called the rational numbers. And the rational numbers are given this big fancy Q. So we call them the rational numbers. And what is a rational number? Well, you might have heard of it before, and that's because any rational number is a number that can be written as a fraction. So it's an integer that can be written as a fraction. So for example, the rational numbers might include some elements such as, let's say minus four, because minus four can be written as minus four over one. It might also have a third as a third as a fraction. We might have 0 0.25 because this can be written as a fraction, obviously one quarter, but it also includes negative fractions. So for example, negative a third. So any number that can be written as a fraction is called a rational number and is given this set capital Q. So like we did with integers, we can say that integers are a subset of the rational numbers. Now the last type of standard set we're going to be looking at is given this big capital R and this is the most common type of set we talk about in maths as it's what we call our real numbers. And what are real numbers? Well real numbers are just all points on the number line. So we get some examples such as minus six which is a real number. It's along the number line we can use. So we've got uh, an integer. Let's do a natural number as well. Let's say 
five is also a real number. Let's do a rational number. We can say that negative a half is also a real number, so it would be a half. We also can have numbers that can't be written as a fraction. So for example, the square root of two, which is an endless number. We can also say pi is a real number, which is 3.14159, so on and so on. So these are all called real numbers, and it's basically every number you can imagine. Like we did before, with natural numbers being a subset of integers, integers being a subset of rational numbers, rational numbers being a set of real numbers. So all these three sets are subsets of real numbers. And we can visualize what I mean by this with a little Venn diagram. This is what's called a Venn diagram. We won't ever be asked to draw these at higher, but basically this shows that this little uh, ellipse in here, it contains all the natural numbers, which we said are a subset of all integers. So we have our integers and all our natural numbers are a subset. So all of these are included within, within all of these. And we said that both of these two are subsets of our rational numbers with the big letter Q. So you can see they're both included inside our circle or our ellipse, sorry, of rational numbers. And we said that the biggest set we'll talk about are real numbers, which as you can see, are all numbers, all rational integer and natural numbers are all real numbers. So this is just a little diagram to visualize the ones we've talked about. So we won't get many examples to do with sets, but I will do one quick example here. And this example just says to list all the numbers in the set P. Now we've got a bit of our notation here. Let's go over what this means. So in here we have X. X is just an element of P. So for example, when we talked about five being an element of S, five we could just call X. We could say that X, which is a number in P, and we said this number here means is an element of, so it means that X is an element of our natural numbers. If you remember, we said the natural numbers are the numbers one, two, three, and so on. So X must be a number within the natural numbers. And this semicolon, this colon, sorry, here means that we have a restriction. So it means that although X is an element of the natural numbers, we have this little restriction where X must meet. So X must be strictly less than five, but greater than one. So in this example here, X can be any number that must be between one and five, not including one and five. Otherwise we would have a straight line underneath here, wouldn't we? So in this example here, X is going to be greater than one, but strictly less than five. So we say that P contains natural numbers, which we said here. So P is a natural, contains all natural numbers um, in the set, uh, where we say which are, sorry, strictly, so this is just reiterating what we said here, strictly greater than one and strictly less than five. Now we might not always be able to write this set. Let's say it was between one and a hundred. We would spend all day sat there writing out the numbers between one and a hundred, but because ours is quite small, we can actually state that the set P, the numbers between one and five and their natural numbers. So they're going to be whole numbers and it doesn't contain one. So it's simply going to be two, three, and four. And we can see that all of these elements are within our natural numbers. So P is a subset of the natural numbers. And we can also say that two, three, and four are less than five, but greater than one.